Me and D Dog in middle school planning on stepping on sh. Me and D Dog in middle school planning on stepping on sh. We love his head, see his burn We love his head, see his burn Once again, the system has failed. A man convicted in a murder from 2012. Picked up on attempted murder charges out on bond Monday when he led police on a chase that left a passenger in his car dead. The subject of today's video is a man that's too wild for his own good. He's so wild that it appears that he's incapable of functioning in a regular society. Some people are just met for prison and the subject of today's video is no different. On the streets, he has the reputation of a deadly killer and he's known to have a couple screws loose in his head. The subject of today's video is none other than NBA D Dog, and today we're going to be telling his story. But before we get into the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. NBA D Dog, whose real name is Darian Bailey, originally grew up and lived in New Orleans, Louisiana until 2005. As most of you probably know, in August of 2005, a deadly tropical hurricane by the name of Hurricane Katrina struck the southeastern United States and caused endless amounts of damage. The hurricane and its aftermath claimed more than 1,800 lives, and it ranked as the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history. The city that was most negatively affected by Hurricane Katrina was New Orleans. As a result, a majority of its residents evacuated, and one of those residents was D-Dog. D-Dog moved to the north side of Baton Rouge and would eventually get tied into the streets as he grew up. He became a member of NBA slash 4KT, made famous by the rapper NBA Youngboy. D-Dog is one of NBA Youngboy's closest friends, and Youngboy constantly shouts him out in his music. In fact, one of Youngboy's most popular songs is called Free D-Dog. Whenever Youngboy had a problem, he would send D-Dog to go handle it. NBA and 4KT primarily beef with another Baton Rouge crew by the name of TBG, made famous by the rappers Fredo Bang and Lit Yoshi. D-Dog became a pure savage at a young age. In fact, he allegedly committed his first murder at just 14 years old. On the evening of November 6, 2012, Derek Marino, his wife Demetria, and their teenage daughter were at home on Wayandante Street in Baton Rouge. Around 6.30 p.m., there was a loud gunshot outside, then the front door flew open. Derek was sitting at the table. Demetria saw two people standing in the doorway with ski masks on. Demetria heard gunshots, grabbed her daughter, and they ran out of the back of the home. Three gunmen fired through the open door at Derek. Derek was struck several times. He was brought to Earl K. Long Hospital, where he tragically passed away. The three perpetrators were later identified as D-Dog's cousin, Juan Herbert, D-Dog's older brother, Benjamin Bailey, who was 20 at the time, and D-Dog, who was just 14 years old at the time. Juan was charged with second-degree murder. He entered into a plea agreement with the state, whereby in exchange for his truthful testimony at trial, he would be allowed to plead guilty to manslaughter. Juan testified that on the day of the shootings, he, Benjamin, and D-Dog went to Juan's apartment on Pampas Street. They were driven there by Benjamin's girlfriend, Tamika Hawkins. Juan testified that at his apartment, they retrieved an AK-47 rifle, a shotgun, and a handgun. Later that day, the three walked to Derek's house and knocked on the door. Juan had the AK-47, Benjamin had the shotgun, and D-Dog had the handgun. Juan heard someone in the house say that he was coming. Juan then kicked the door in and shot Derek. Juan was not sure how many times he fired. The crazy thing about this is that while Juan was committing the murder, D-Dog accidentally shot Juan four times in his back and side. Juan was driven to the hospital and survived the injuries D-Dog gave him. The Baton Rouge Police Department testified that when they arrived at the scene of the shootings, it appeared there were three different shooters since there were three different types of shell casings at the house. Detectives noted that there were 22 caliber casings in the front yard and front porch area and one in the living room. 
There were two 762 caliber casings in the living room. There was also shotgun wadding under an end table in the living room. Eventually, the police found a blue jacket, a pink ski mask, and a black baseball cap by the dumpster of a liquor store near the scene of the crime. The DNA of Benjamin, Juan, and D-Dog were found on those items. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there was something off about D-Dog mentally, and this would be fully revealed during his murder trial. His mother told law enforcement that D-Dog began having behavioral problems after he was hit by a car while riding his bicycle at a young age. At the time of his murder trial, D-Dog was still underage. Prosecutors wanted him to be tried as an adult, but after a mental evaluation, a juvenile court judge ruled that he would stand trial as a juvenile. After two days of testimony, Judge Pamela Taylor Johnson found D-Dog had borderline intelligence and the mind of a 10-year-old, even though he was a teenager. Additionally, a user on Reddit that claims to have been locked up with D-Dog back in the day allegedly witnessed his mental instability firsthand. According to the user, when D-Dog was locked up as a teenager, he would allegedly go on rampages and fight the guards, even while he was butt naked. The guards would allegedly be pepper spraying him and everything, but he would keep on fighting. Ultimately, D-Dog pled guilty in 2019 to a manslaughter charge. He was given 10 years in prison, but only served 8 before he was released. D-Dog's wild behavior in prison would lead to more charges, as he was charged with two counts of battery on a police officer and multiple counts of resisting a police officer with force or violence. On September 6, 2022, D-Dog was arrested and charged with an attempted murder that took place on July 31, 2018. He was given a $300,000 bond for the crime and he was able to bond out. Just days after bonding out, D-Dog would do something crazy and crash out for seemingly the last time. On September 21st, 2022, shortly after being released from prison, D-Dog would get into a high-speed chase after coming into contact with law enforcement officers. While driving at super high speeds, D-Dog would get into a crash and tragically, the passenger that was in the car with him passed away. Law enforcement proceeded to search his car and found a ski mask and weapons inside. People believe that D-Dog was planning on getting back to drilling and carrying out hits. D-Dog was taken to the hospital to tend to his injuries. D-Dog was officially charged with first-degree vehicular manslaughter, negligent injuring, resisting an officer, possession of a firearm, and manslaughter. He is currently back in jail, being held on a staggering $19.7 million bond. It's crazy to see someone being given a second opportunity at life throw it away so easily. His friend has become one of the richest rappers in the world, and rather than take advantage of it, he threw it all away. This story goes to show you the importance of mental health. The justice system knew that D-Dog had mental health issues, and rather than get him rehabilitated, they just threw him back onto the streets to wreak havoc on people's lives. Let me know what you guys think of this situation in the comment section, and please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.